Hi everyone, Matt Christensen from Fuse Recruitment here. Um, just wanted to take you on a quick exploration of our Fuse Recruitment timesheets and to have a quick chat to you about what we need you to do when you're doing your timesheets for us week by week. First and foremost, though, I wanted to say welcome to the Fuse family. Um, we're thrilled by um, the fact that you've uh, taken on an on-hide or a, or a casual role within our business and we're, we're lucky to have you on board and we're looking forward to being a, uh, a part of your career as you move forward. So. Um, but to do that, we want to make sure that we, we get you introduced to our timesheeting system. This is important for us because we need to get your times filled in uh, weekly and approved by your host employer every week so it can come through to our, to our um, payroll team to get you paid um, you know, usually on a weekly or a fortnightly basis, depending on the arrangements that you've done with the consultant, right? But really, really important that we get that information. So first and foremost, I want to introduce you to the dashboard. This will be slightly different for yours. I have administrator privileges, so there's some extra pieces on this that um, won't be uh, won't be available on yours. But the reason why I want to put this on here is that you will land on a on a dashboard, and when you land on a dashboard. Um, the first thing that I want to really show to you on here is the fact that there is a stack of user guides down here in downloads, right? Really, really important for you to understand this. If you astute create fantastic guides, you can download them whether you're looking at um, two-factor authentication, whether you're looking at um, how to use the timesheet portal, they'll give you some really, really in detail um, instruction. This is really just to give you a very, very basic overview. And I'll talk about these in a bit more detail um, at the back end of the conversation. So that's there, right? But what we're going to do first and foremost, I'll ask you to start to fill in your information. So I've created a dummy account here and I want to step you through it. I'm not going to fill this information in as we go. What I want to do is just introduce you to it. Again, as an administrator, I've got a couple of extra items on the side here that you may not have access to. That's fine. You don't need them, but I'll step through the really important things for us. So when you land personal details, this will pull some of the information out of our, out of our recruitment database that the consultant would have preloaded right some of this may be subtly incorrect so if you use um, if you use a uh, an anglicized name or a nickname or some other type of name in your on your resume or on your database this may not be uh, reflecting your actual name this is where it's really really important to put the name as it as it stands on your tax documents and on your banking documents and these types of things right so we've got the ability to put our names in here dates of birth email addresses, um, phone numbers. We also have emergency contact information on here. Very important for us to have this information. Again, if we need to contact you and we can't reach you, we've got a secondary point of contact or vice versa. If we need to contact someone on your behalf, we have that information. So please make sure that's in there. It's really important. Um, there'll be a spot in there for you to fill in your bank accounts pretty self-explanatory, put your primary bank account that you want to be paid into in there. But if you do have the requirement to split income or to split information, um, you've got the ability, sorry, to split payment, you've got the ability to put that information in here at the additional accounts with a dollar amount or a percentage depending on what you want to do, right? And then finally, what you'll have is your tax um, information and also your superannuation information. Now, Back in the day, um, and I'm sure you've seen this from other employers, you might get the carbon copy form from the from the ATO that you hand fill and hand sign and then your employer sent through to the tax office. This is all done electronically. So if you look at here, you'll see the start tax file declaration. This is really, really simple to do. There's a couple of little points in there that I just want to point out. Right, so we've clicked through to the tax uh, file declaration form. I've pre-filled some of the information in here just for ease of use. There's three points that I really want to make on this form and it's important um, both for us as, a, as an organisation managing your pay but also for you and, and the tax implications. So first one is this question on what basis are you employed? You'll see that there is a labour hire option in here. You are not a labour hire employee um, under the tax office definitions. You are going to be a casual under casual employment. So please do not click labour hire. You will be a casual employee. So click casual employment. If you are by the off chance doing something part time or full time, sure those other buttons are there for you. But I would suggest that 99.9% .9 of the people that work through um, Fuse Recruitment is going to be under this casual employment um, definition. Right. The next uh, one that's important to look at is are you an Australian resident for tax purposes, a foreign resident for tax purposes, or a working holiday maker? The vast majority of people do not will not fall under a foreign resident for tax purposes. If you're here on a foreign national here on a visa, 
Um, if you're not a working holiday um, maker, there's every chance that you'll be an Australian resident for tax purposes. The definition will be on your tax file number information, but a good example of a foreign resident for tax purposes is an athlete who comes into the country to, to participate in a tournament. Um, appearance fee, prize money, those types of things, they may well be a foreign resident for tax purposes, but if you are here to work and you have a working visa, um, the likelihood is, is that you will fall under either the first one or the third one, right? So make sure that we put the right, um, the right radio button there. Let's click through to the second page. And the third one that we want to um, look at here is do you want to claim the tax-free threshold for this payer? In Australia, the first and primary employer um, in source of employment that you have, you are entitled to the tax-free threshold. Um, the vast majority of people um, that work through Fuse Recruitment, again, 99.9%, .9 I would expect that this will be the primary uh, employment that you have. You might have a second job or this might be a second job, but if this is the primary role, you want to change this to yes. You'll see that the radio button default position is no. What this means is that you will be taxed from the first dollar you earn. If you are claiming the threshold, you will be taxed from the first dollar you earn after the threshold. So it may well be that you that you are earning that you're paying some tax unnecessarily. Um, if you have clicked this, no, you have to go back into the form and resubmit it. Don't stress. Uh, we can't do much about the fact that we've got to pay this extra tax, but it should be available to you on your tax refund um, at the end of the financial year if it is on the no position for a while. Right. Really important that we make sure that if this is your primary source of employment, that you are going to claim the tax-free threshold. I won't go through to the next page. The next page is really just the final um, steps, declaration, sign-off, submission, those type of things. I won't bother with that. The second thing is super. So if we go back to tax and super, you can see that we can select our super fund in here as well. So again, click on select. You've got the choice of our default, uh, sorry, our default fund, which currently is Sun Super, uh, and we'll put you into that fund when when your super is due to be paid to the super house, or if you want to use your own account, whether it be self-managed or whether it be another super fund, you've got the opportunity to upload that information. You're going to need your obviously your account number, who the super um, information is, and usually there's a, a spin number or something like that that you'll need to upload. That's readily available from most of the super um, annuation houses websites if you don't have that on any of your documents. Right, so that's there for you to do. The one thing that I think is important to note for super, um, we're obliged to pay super as a minimum quarterly. Um, so we will pay your super every quarter. So if you're checking your super balance and you notice that it hasn't been paid um, from us, please be aware that that um, comes through at the end of each one of those financial quarters. So um, what are we talking? End of September, end of, se end of December, end of March, end of June, right? That's our obligation to pay super and that's when we pay super through to the, the, the variety of different accounts that we have, right? So once you've had that information all put in there and you go to save, right, you'll see that may be some red exclamation marks that pop up on your screens, right? This is an indication that there is vital information um, missing before we can complete your profile. So please go and pay the attention to that. If you have troubles with this or you have um, uh, issues happening with your screen that doesn't allow, uh, with your profile that doesn't allow you to save without an exclamation mark, don't hesitate to give your recruitment consultant a call and step through that with them, right? So let's just assume for the sake of the argument that we're completely filled out and we're ready to rock. It's our first week, we're looking to go to work and we wanna put um, information in our timesheet. So on the dashboard, you'll have the opportunity for you to click on the timesheet, right? And that will take you through to this particular screen. And all the timesheets will look like this. As you can see, obviously, it's a, a, a dummy one for the sake of, of argument. And it will default on the week that the day that you're, that you're doing the information in. So obviously, the 17th to the 23rd of August, I'm doing it on the 18th of August. It sits here um, ready to go as a default. If you needed to change the week that you're working on for a particular reason, either go back to last week because you hadn't completed the timesheet or there was information missing or something, right? You've got the ability to access all pending timesheets, all future timesheets through this through this menu drop down here, right? And that also allows you to go back and look at previous timesheets that you've had filled and approved and paid on the way through. So you have your timesheet here. Um, sorry, we'll just get this uh, to go down. We'll just use this week. Right, so here we are. Right, obviously Monday, uh, for the sake of the argument, I've, I've 
put the timesheet starting or the job starting from today instead of yesterday. So if if the this start date is incorrect and you see blanks like this, or you find that you're going to get a new timesheet and you've got um, days blanked out and you can't get to it and you need to put times in because you're working, get in contact with your recruitment consultant. What it means is that the dates that we have lined up for you are subtly incorrect and we just need to get those dates corrected and then those and those days will appear. But let's look at this particular example. Today's the 18th. It's Tuesday. I've gone to work. Let's say for argument's sake that I went to work at, um, at 8.30 and let's say for argument's sake that I'm finishing at 5.30 works best if you use 24 hour clock and let's say for the argument's sake that I worked 30 minutes right that allows me to put that time in and you can see over here that it's calculated the, the hours that I've worked right so all you need to do is put that in for each one of the days if you're going to work the same day over and over and over you can copy to all and it will copy only for the weekdays. If you're working weekends, it doesn't pre-fill that you need to manually go and fill that. If there's notes that you want to send either to us as the payroll people or to um, your host employer when you do your timesheet, you can do this. So let's say, for example, on Thursday, um, I was unwell. So let's take this time out. I can go to the, I'll just close this down, to the notes for Thursday and I can put in here, sick did not work. Right, and that allows me to have a note that is there available for that particular day and that comes up on your timesheet and it goes through to your host for approval. They understand that if you're doing allocations for particular works, if you need to have it pushed up against some kind of internal um, coding system to allocate you as a resource to a project or something like that, that's a great place to put the information. The other thing that you can do with notes is write notes down here and that is generalised notes. You can say, um, was ill Thursday? and put that information or a message through to us and that will go there as well, right? The other thing that I think is important to put in there, let's say for argument that I worked for an afternoon shift. So let's say I started at three o'clock in the afternoon and I worked through to um, 10 o'clock in the evening, right? With a half an hour break, right? What you can see here is that it takes that information there, but we come over to allowances and we might have the opportunity then to put in the time that we're working for an allowance. So we've got six and a half hours in there. And again, it shows to our employer, our host, that that's the after, after hour shift. Now, there is going to be a limitation in the context of um, each shift that you work. Uh, I think seven and a half hours after that, you might get overtime. You're not entitled to shift allowance when you're working overtime. You get the overtime rate, but you won't get the shift allowance rate. So you've got to make sure that your allowances are only for the single hour, the single time hours that you work. So single time for six and a half hours, put that in there. If I did, for example, um, and it was seven and a half hours, if I did, uh, let's just say I worked to midnight or we'll do um, 23.59 just for the sake of argument, right? You can see there's 8.48. You do 7.5 in there, no more. And what, what that will mean is that you'll get the difference between that number and 7.5 as, as an overtime rate versus um, the shift rate, right? So again, there's going to be some subtle variations that happen from workplace to workplace, um, award to award. It's important to understand that. So the information that you put in there is, is important and often will be tailored to each individual workplace, but that gives you an idea roughly about how to put the information into the timesheet if you needed to put it in. When you get to the end of the week, um, if you didn't work at all, you can click it off and say that I effectively did not work, right? You can notify us if you um, are finishing this particular week. If it's, um, let's say you're going to work for, th for for 12 weeks and you've done 10 and it's time to finish, well, you can let us know that you've completed and that will send an email to your consultant. Um, or finally, if you did have a um, workplace injury in there, it's important to notify that um, to us so we do get that information and we can manage it from there. Once you're done, you submit. You can save these things as you go along each particular day but when you get to the end you submit and what that does, it comes up with a pending approval and that will send an email through to your host employer who is approving your work to say, hey, here's my times, can I, um, uh, can I get it approved? Now your host will either approve it or they'll reject it, right? If they reject it, 
it is um, usually re rejected with a note to give you an idea of, hey, listen, just a heads up, um, you actually work to 12.30 this particular night, so put in the correct time, you know, whatever the message back is to allow you to go back and re-edit that timesheet. So that's a basic overview on how the timesheets work. So it's important, again, that we have our logins, uh, sorry, our profile created correctly, but also to put the information in the timesheet. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in your dashboard, there are two user guides. Oh, there are, there'll be user guides. There are two user guides that I want you to, to be aware of, right? One of the user guides is just the straight employee guide. This one will take you through pretty much the functionality of your um, of your payrolling system and what you will have access to. You can see it shows you how how to enter your information in a, in a lot more detail than what I've shown you. It will show you how to do your timesheets. It will show you how to do expenses. It'll show you a lot more information than what we can cover in this particular video. It is a fantastic guide. Um, the Astute guys have done it really, really well, and it is full of all the information that you will need. If you get to a point where there's something happening that you don't think is in this guide, don't hesitate to call your recruitment consultant to get this information back, right? That's one guide. The second guide that I think is important for you to, for you to look at is how to set up two-factor authentication. All of your payroll information um, has a second layer of security on it so people can't crack into the system and, and get access to that information. So it's important to set up this second uh, two-factor authentication on your profile. This guide will step you through that um, across multiple ways, whether you're using a uh, mobile app, whether you're using um, backup emails, a whole range of things. This is how you can register. It's how you can um, change which device you use for that second factor authentication if you get a new phone, all of those types of things. So we've got these two guides that are on your dashboard. Again, if you have problems with it, call your consultant. They'll be able to come and take it from, uh, sorry, del deliver it to you on email, take the, the information that you have um, help you want it, do all those types of things. The one thing that we can't do, and the one thing that, that um, the two-factor authentication has um, taken away from our ability to do, is the ability to uh, change your password. So if you forget your password, if you um, have issues logging in, we can't reset your password, you will have to go through the forget password, the two-factor steps, all of those types of things. And that is just what the, is happening with all payrolling systems and, and the privacy requirements around now. There is there is no um, ability for other people to see that information or to crack that information to, to get to it. So make sure you remember the password. Make sure you remember how you do your two-factor authentication. It's really important. Um, that's pretty much all I needed to show you on this. And I hope um, that gives you a, a quick orientation overview. Like I said, use those user guides with more details or call us if you have any any questions or call your consultant if you have any questions directly about um, how to use a student and how to get, um, how to get paid on time. Um, but apart from that, thanks again for joining the Fuse family. We look forward to, uh, to working with you and uh, I've been Matt Christensen and we'll speak to you later. Thank you.